Hi there, this is just a quick tutorial on how I developed or created my Padlet um, for my writing journal. First thing I went to do is I clicked on New Padlet. Padlet comes up with a, um, a new standard look. The look is a little bit different if you use Padlet before because they've just made some recent updates. So I'm going to go over here to change my title. I changed mine to Writing Journal, and you can put directions here if you want. Now for the layout, um, there's three layouts here. For the digital journal, I do use Stream because it puts the most recent entry up on the top, just like a Facebook crawl would be. Um, but if you have another activity, just real quick. Uh, the free form, it's like post-it notes. So you can put a um, activity in there where you put a question in it, all the kids answer at once, and then you could uh, move the answers around just like a post-it note. And then if they're doing multiple answers and they're going to be responding in multiple times, you can use something like the grid and it puts columns in there. It's, it's an organized way to see everything quickly. And it's better and quicker than looking at something than it would be in a stream. But for the writing journal, we're going to use stream. You get to select the wallpaper you'd like to use, and the great part about this is that you also can add your own wallpaper. So if you wanted to upload something and let's see, use these penguins here, we can customize this in any way. If you're in a small group, you could be doing um, a book study. You maybe upload the cover of a book to it. Okay, and once we get that in there, okay, go back to your selections again. And you have these icons here, and as you can see, they're clicking and they're showing up here. Another great thing is when you hit more is that you can add your own. So if you wanted to upload the, a kid's picture or something more specific that you're working on, if you're talking about whales, whatever, you can do the same thing that you just did right there. So you open that up, and that'll save right. So you have a lot of flexibility to create a very interesting and visual document the kids are going to want to go to. They're going to want to write in this more so than a black and white notebook, but it gets better. So let's go back, and if there's any tags you want to put if you people wanted to find this out, if you're sharing it um, globally. Once you go there, go to Next, and Next, your decision is going to have to be on what kind of privacy you want. Do you want a private? Only the people who you add individually can be added. Um, password protected, secret. I think I usually generally use secret just because you know I don't want it necessarily available to all the users of Padlet. Um, but and I want anybody who has a link to it to be able to get there. So I'm going to put that. This is the most critical part right here is what you want them to be able to do with their link. Now, if you want them just to be able to read the link and not respond to it, can read would be your choice. If you want them to be able to view it and be able to add a new entry but not change any existing entries, that would be can write. I opted not to use that. I opted to go for teaching digital culture in my classroom. In order for me to use it the way I wanted to, which was I wanted the children to be able to open up this journal, their journal, and be able to write in it anywhere they were, whether it was in the library, whether it was on their classroom computer, or someone else's computer, or home, or a telephone um, that they're borrowing from their grandmother, cell phone rather, um, they'd be able to do that. So I put can moderate. And by picking can moderate, any child can go into their work and can change that. So it's important that you establish a digital culture. If you can't get that culture set to where they can respect each other's work, then you might have to go another route to where they may not necessarily be able to edit that. So that's um, was something that I had to decide on. I went all year, I didn't have any problems. Occasionally somebody accidentally wrote into the, um, someone else's, nobody deleted anybody's work, and um, they were very, very respectful for that, and that was a group of fourth graders. So you'll have to make that call and see how that works out. After you do that, you're gonna click Next, and you're ready to start posting. Now, you're digital journal set up and it's the way you need it. You've got it to where you moderate it, you've got it to where um, all the kids can have their own copy um, with a link. Now we gotta make additional copies of this. You're gonna go to the word clone, go clone, and as you hit copy with outposts, or you, if you had a direction that you wanted to copy, or a photograph, or a video link that you had that you wanted to copy, you can copy everything. 
Um, so it didn't matter which one I were to hit today. But once I hit that, it gave me a link to the second one. As I continue to click the button, click, 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 click. As you can see, it's expanding. The next thing I had to do was I just had to go by and I highlighted all of these, right clicked, and I copied them onto a regular Word document for myself here. And as you can see, I have all my links here. My students are in alphabetical order, so obviously the first one was number one. I did not go through a number of these. This is just so you see. Each one of these is an individual link. What I did with the links then was I just highlighted the link, copied it again, and I went over to my Symbaloo and I pasted that link individually into a square. And I uploaded um, the just the typical Padlet bird that came up with it when I inserted it, so I just left it be. So I went through and I did that individually. Yeah, that's a little bit of setup time, but when in the end I never went back to it for the rest of the year. Occasionally, you might accidentally copy and paste the same digital journal um, web address into the same um, two different boxes. So the first time you start this out, you might want to make sure that, okay, everybody, if anyone's typing on anyone else's, who are you? And then you can click and see and make sure. And if you have this document saved, you'll be able to go through and quickly find out, you know, which link it is that should have been in the box that was showing up as someone else's. So that's how I have done it. Um, it made my life really easy. I was able to um, send a link to the entire Symbaloo with everything um, all the different squares posted on it. It didn't bother me that other parents could read other children's works because I think that when you're looking at a bunch of apples, it's kind of nice to, you know, see how the other kids are coming along. And they could see where um, their child is, and they're able to open it up at home. We had situations where I would send out a writing link and say, hey, your kids are going to be reading or writing in their journals between, you know, 9 and 9.30 this morning. If you're at work or somewhere and you want to as story and write it with them at the same time, feel free. So the kid would be writing, all of a sudden their parent starts writing to the same story prompt, and both of them are going um, at the same time, and you know, it made the kid really excited to see mom or dad in there writing along with them, and they got to have some ideas off their stories. So that's how I did it. I hope um, it is going to be something you'll be able to replicate if you choose to. And in the meantime, I hope you, uh,